And that breaking news is out of China, where two more flights carrying Americans will fly to California tonight. Difficult and uncertain. That's how this family describes their journey to quarantine. We got locked down. We, 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 have, we can leave the room. We got to stay in the room until everybody got checked out. We're treating it as a, as a real threat, and we're doing everything in our power. But now something new. We have uncovered coronavirus crooks. California on heightened alert today after the CDC confirmed a new case of coronavirus in our area. The first U.S. case, it was a Solano County woman. It was last week. She had actually been in the hospital for almost a week before she was actually tested for COVID-19. And the reason why was because she didn't meet the federal requirements to actually get tested. She didn't travel abroad. She didn't know anyone who had contracted the virus. And so in that time, she between two different hospitals here at UC Davis Medical Center in Sacramento and also North Bay Vaca Valley Hospital in Solano County. And now as a result of this one patient, there are more than 200 medical staff that are now under self-quarantine for precautionary measures. And now hospitals are going to start conducting tests. They don't have to necessarily go through the CDC and get the okay. On Friday, our state just got a lot more testing kits for COVID-19. We only had about 200 as of Friday morning, which is vastly inadequate according to the governor for for california which is such a huge state and such a large population i do think there's a level of skepticism um, especially when it comes to medical staff that was my most recent story was talking to the california nurses association which represents all of the registered nurses across the state and they have serious grave concerns with how hospitals are are on the front end taking precautionary measures to protect their, their staff and their nurses. But they can't remember the last time where you had over 200 medical staff self-quarantining for one patient. And because of that, they have grave concerns about you know, what precautionary measures are being taken, what's not being taken on the front end, because that is not sustainable from a medical standpoint. Tyler Shepard, his wife, and their one-year-old son left China on a U.S. cargo plane. You can see their view as they made their way to Omaha. We first initially heard about quarantine here in Nebraska at the beginning of the month when it was announced that Camp Ashland uh, would be a possible site. Uh, once that was confirmed, it was only days later where 57 passengers who evacuated from Wuhan, China, flew from China to California to Texas and then to Omaha, which is like a 40 hour travel trip, which is exhausting. And then as soon as they land, hours of screening and monitoring to make sure nobody's showing any symptoms. And then on top of that, another basically hour bus ride to Camp Ashland, where they would have to be there for 14 days in quarantine. One of that family that I spoke to were the Shepherds. Tyler Shepherd, the dad, he's a English teacher in Shenzhen, but they were in Wuhan, near Wuhan, visiting his wife's family. And um, him and his wife have a one-year-old named Neil. And so Neil had to go in quarantine. They had to bring this toddler with them. And uh, while in quarantine, Neil got to celebrate his first birthday. If you've seen the video, they're all singing happy birthday to Neil and they're surrounded by people in protective gear and body suits and masks. All the 57 passengers who are in quarantine at Camp Ashland were considered clear of the virus and able to go home on Thursday of last week. And I actually got to see Tyler in person at the airport, you know, not over video call and while he was taking his flight uh, to go back to his home in California. And he said, Obviously, the situation is scary, but he said there was a bright side to it in the fact that his wife and his son have never met his family. So now they can actually be together, meet the family, hang out in California, and then once it's considered safe to return back to China, um, they plan to go back there. Coronavirus crooks fishing for victims. Jeff Rawson reveals the ways thieves are using the epidemic to get your personal information. So what the crooks are doing is using something very heavily in the news that you could get scared about. They stoke fear, right? They use it. 
you click on it and all of a sudden they have your email address, your phone number, your, your passwords, all of it. It's a phishing scam. And what they do is they send you an email that looks like it's from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control. And it says if you want an updated list of all the infected people in your area, all the cases, click here. You click on it, it brings you to what looks like a Microsoft Outlook login screen, and it looks real. And you type in your email and your password, and it takes you nowhere. Why? Because now they have your information. It's a dummy page, it doesn't go anywhere. And they have your info. The other piece of the hoax is they send you another type of email. Again, looks like it's from the CDC, but it really isn't. And this, and on this one, they say, hey, you know, all of our workers are working around the clock to come up with a vaccine, and this takes money. So do you want to donate? And it takes you to a page where you can donate money. And you think you're giving money to the doctors who are working around the clock to come up with a vaccine. And again, look, I mean, look at these domains, uh, cdc-gov.org. To be clear, the real CDC domain is cdc.gov, no org. None of that, just cdc.gov. This one is cdc-gov.org. So when you look at that very quickly and you, you see the CDC logo, you assume it's real. We're treating it as a, as a real threat and we're doing everything in our power to enable as rapid testing and scale up as possible should indeed this, uh, our worst fears be realized and this turn into uh, a, a, a global pandemic threat. So today, um, this first batch has been shipped to the federal government. They're working through an agency with the National Institutes of Health, and they're going to start using this in a clinical trial. So it's not available for everybody just yet, but it's in a clinical trial that'll go to phase one. And the hope is then that if it works, it could be given to everybody. So obviously this is really important. It's top of mind for a lot of people because so many people are getting sick. So there is a degree of pressure to do this quickly. And interestingly, when we talked to this company just several weeks ago, they wouldn't tell us when they thought this would be ready. But now within the space of three weeks, they've shipped their first batch. So clearly this is a priority for them, for the federal government. And also that they're doing these clinical trials tells us that they think this is going to be around for a while. Clinical trials take time, right? So they think this is going to be a threat that will continue. And that's why they're so focused on finding an answer. So right now the vaccine timeline is a little sketchy and I think that researchers never like to give specifics, right? That's what they do. They're, they always hedge their bets. But that the first batch of this vaccine has shipped for a clinical trial shows that things are moving along. So I would say this is one to watch. I know we always say that in news, right? Stay tuned. Um, but truly this time I would say stay tuned. And also that this Cambridge-based company is not the only one that's working on this. Other companies are. So this may be a race to find this vaccine. and it, I think it will come sooner rather than later.